the DuPont Cavalcade of America. Starring Dana Andrews in the story of a soldier who was ordered to bring home the moon. The play, Weather is a Weapon, on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Before we begin our play, here is helpful information about DuPont Speed Easy, the wall finish you can use right over wallpaper or any other wall surface. Although Speed Easy is an oil type paint, you thin it with water and apply it with a large brush or roller. In less than one hour, your walls are dry, and you have a beautiful velvety finish. It costs less than $3 to do the average room in one color. When you redecorate, get Speed Easy. It's speedy, and it's easy. It's made by DuPont. And now, the DuPont Cavalcade presents Weather is a Weapon, starring Dana Andrews as Lieutenant Howard Jameson of the United States Army Air Force Weather Service. Eleven days ago, at his capture, the German field marshal, Karl von Rundstedt, said, Weather is a weapon the German army used with success, especially in the Ardennes offensive. This battle of the bulge, as you call it, might have changed the entire course of the war had it not been for the fact that the United States Air Force so quickly took advantage of the break and the weather. Weather was a weapon that fought for both sides during the Battle of the Bulge last December. Von Rundstedt knew it. Our Air Force knew it. And we know now, behind our counterattack with the unsung heroes of the Weather Service, Men who watch the skies. On a lonely outpost in Greenland lies one of the weather eyes of the Army Air Forces, the Weather Service Observation Station. It is late afternoon in December 1944. Captain Faulkner, commanding officer of the post, is speaking to Lieutenant Howard Jameson. Lieutenant Jameson, you can get me into more hot water than any man in this outfit. But, Captain, I, I just explained... I know, you got sick of weather reconnaissance and went flying off looking for German planes. But I, I brought back the weather report, sir. That was very considerate of you. Jameson, what makes you do things like this? You could understand him if you were a natural-born show-off, but you aren't. A clean-cut, intelligent. Aside from these show-off escapades, you're as efficient a man as I've got in the outfit. Why, I suppose I did look like a show-off, going out to look for German planes, and I've been assigned to weather reconnaissance. But why do you do such things? You, you're not a rebel. Something on your mind? No, sir. Except that... Well, go on. This sounds kiddish, I suppose. But I want to get the war over. Go on home. I want to do it fast. I took a pilot training, so I could. But the two years I've spent snooping around clouds in Greenland looking for weather seems like all my time is being wasted. And my training, too. Hmm. Too good for the job the Army's given you, huh? Oh, no, sir. Well, maybe you can get a different perspective from the ground. The ground? I'm grounding you, Jameson. Assigning you to maps and charts. Sergeant Gale will be your assistant. <laughs> but, sir... That's all. Dismissed. Visibility, one-eighth of a mile. Check. Wind direction, 200 degrees. Check. Speed, six miles per hour. Check. I bet I say check more times in one year than a banker does in his whole lifetime. How'd you like to be in my shoes, Sergeant? I have to listen. Yeah. Two weeks of riding around this island on a jeep playing with weather charts. <sighs> Sergeant, I tell you, it's getting me. Yeah, it's enough to make a guy hate his draft board, eh? Hermits on the fertilized iceberg they're called Greenland. You know, I know I knew a hermit once. His name was Michael. Yeah? His name was Myrtle? Yeah, he was a title. He hermited for over 200 years. That's old, brother. No, no, really, he was 200 years old. Think what a big help it could be if he could remember the weather for 200 years. We could put it down and average it up, you know. Go on. You're clear from the time of Napoleon. 
That will be a very large average, Lieutenant. Very interesting. Check. Uh, monotony. Charts, maps, lines, circles, paragraphs, thermometers, and sergeants. Hello? <laughs> okay, Sergeant. Come on. Back to the Jeep. Yeah. Check. It's a great war. A fellow goes through pilot training and... Oh, well. The moon lifting her silver rim above a cloud. And with a gradual swim coming into the blue with all her light. Eh? Huh? What's the matter? Why are you looking at me that way? Hey, Lieutenant, what you just said uh, didn't make sense. It's poetry. Oh. I, uh, I always recite poetry when things seem like they're too big for me. Monotony is strange. Why? Why? Oh, well. I don't know, because I guess reciting poetry seems like such a sore trick for a guy like me. Keeps me from doing something that's worse. The lines I just recited were from John Keith. Never met him. <laughs> the moon brought him to mind. What moon? The moon up there in the sky. Hey, sure enough. Yeah, but this chart says no no moon. What? The chart says snow followed by ice, clouds, but no moon. Well, what do you know about that? Mother Nature's violating the rules. This ought to happen more often. A few surprises and a weather job wouldn't be so bad. Uh, uh, how do you figure it happens? Uh-oh. Going back again. I'll write that down, Sergeant. With the date. And way ahead of you, sir. It's already down. Look at her go, Sergeant. Pretty, isn't she? Hey. And the moon is she, you know. Feminine, fragile. Yeah, that's the same way I feel about Michael, Lieutenant. Even though the guy told me she was a he. Why, I even carved my initials on its back. Listen. Yeah? What's that? Sounds like an airplane. It is an airplane. Well, what's so surprising about that? It's a C-46 Commando. It doesn't belong to this base. Hey, there's the walkie-talkie. Theo must be lonesome. Right? I got it. I got it. Hello? Post 18, Lieutenant Jameson speaking. Yes, Captain. Yes, sir. We'll report at once. Sergeant, start your motor. We're going back to headquarters. Yes, sir. Uh, what's up, sir? I don't know, but the Captain sounds awfully excited. Let her go fast. Well, hold on to your commission, Lieutenant. Here we go again. Me, Captain? Sit down, Jameson. Oh, I have the report here, sir. I uh, hope nothing's wrong. On the contrary, you're to be commended for your work these past two weeks. Oh, uh, Lieutenant Jameson, meet uh, Lieutenant Crane of the Army Air Force. Lieutenant Crane? Glad to know you, Jameson. I uh, knew Crane was coming in with orders that you wouldn't want delayed, so I called as soon as his plane was sighted. Well, Jameson, you can now have something you've been aching for a flying assignment. Hot dog! I mean, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> you mean. Hot dog, Jameson. I know how you feel, man. <laughs> thanks, Captain. Yeah, you better hold your thanks. This is a tough one. The Germans have broken through on the Western Front. The Germans have broken through? When Rundstedt counterattacked in Belgium, Holland, Luxembourg, and France. Wow. The whole line is fluid. Every available man is needed up at the front. And I can fly combat there? Not exactly. You see, the Air Force is grounded because of weather conditions. Headquarters wants an observer for a very hazardous mission. A volunteer familiar with this area since this is the place where weather is made for Europe. Yes, sir. You've been here for two years, so naturally you're the man. However, you don't have to ask for it. The way the fog has settled down, flying across won't be any picnic. When do we leave, sir? By the way, if Crane here thinks he can fly you to the French mainland in spite of prevailing conditions... We've got to make it, Captain. They can't wait on the other side. Well, if they can't wait on the other side, we can't wait here. Good luck, Jameson. Oh, uh, Captain, I'm, I'm sorry to leave you, sir, and, and Sergeant Gale, but there's Greenland... It may be a great spot for predicting weather in Europe, but for me, you can give it back to the Eskimos. Bad night. Fierce. Worst flying I've ever seen. Yeah, me too. We'll make it, though. Sure. Hope like the golden paper's life adorns and cheers our way. And still, the darker goes the night, emits a brighter ray. What thing? Huh? I didn't hear what you said. Oh. Oh, I wasn't saying anything. I was just uh, reciting poetry. Poetry? Yeah. You find poetry relieves the tension? Why'd you ask that? Oh. Every guy is his own way. Myself, when I'm scared, I... I look at my kid's picture. Is that him? Yeah. Day three now. 
This is how he was when I left. One year older. Nice little guy. Uh, great. Greatest little guy in the world. How old are you, Crane? Me? 22. Hmm. Uh, Crane, do you think those Germans will get anywhere with their counterattack? Might if we don't get some better weather. Not getting it tonight. No. Nope. That's bad. I, uh... uh go ahead. Uh, recite poetry if you want to. No. No, uh, I don't feel like reciting poetry. Um... Uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the only reason I had the kid's picture out was to, well, to see, to see if the sure. fog is... Sure. You know, there's one thing I like about the Air Force is <laughs> you meet such great guys. Human guys. Major Harned? Lieutenant Jameson and Crane reporting, sir. Welcome to France, man. You're Jameson? Yes. Crane? Right, sir. Glad you're here. Must have had a rough passage. Well, it wasn't bad, sir. <laughs> we wore our rubbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've heard that you were resourceful, Jameson. Your captain stressed the fact rather strongly. Not Captain Faulkner. We asked him to pick a man for us. He said if there was such a thing as a one-man team, you'd be it. Captain Faulkner said that? He also said to be sure we kept you busy or you'd find things to do on your own hook. <laughs> well, no, don't look so embarrassed. So it happens we need your kind of a man at this particular moment. Excuse me, Major Hunter. Here's the latest report from Baston. All right, Corporal. Just keep them coming. Yes, sir. Jameson Crane. Look at this report. Bulge is getting bigger all the time. Wow. Hey, that looks bad. We could put our planes in the air. We could stop them. Weather. Uh, excuse me. Major Hunter speaking. Well, Major. Still the same, Colonel. No flying weather in sight for at least 24 hours. This is getting to be an old story with you, Major. When will we have some flying weather? I'm afraid from the looks of things, this may go on for days. The low ceiling is all over the area. Never mind the low ceiling. Get my planes off the ground. If you don't, we stand to lose this whole front. Maybe even the war if we don't stop von Rulsen. Colonel, we don't make the weather. We just forecast it. I'll call back in half an hour. Mm, Jameson, you see what we're up against? Germans in front of us, the Air Force is at Russia. They think we manufacture weather. I wish we could, sir. So do I. Here, now, here are your orders. Take a look at this map, yeah. The 101st Airborne is fighting in this area here, you see? You are to follow as closely as possible. With their protection, you and Crane can establish right about here. See? Yes. Set up your mobile weather equipment at once. At once. Take readings every half hour. Radio on back and code. That way, if a break is on the way, we'll know about it. Right, sir. Crane? It's all clear to me, sir. Without our air power, the Germans can chase us out of France. So get us some flying weather, do you hear? And when you get there, make it a point to stay alive. We need those reports. Well, we're really in the thick of it now, Crane. Keep down. Down nothing. We can't stay here and live. We get up, we won't live long. Uh, we're lucky. What if we'd gone with the 101st Airborne instead of following them? Yeah. And those poor guys. Cut off around Hey, it. there's an abandoned jeep. Let's make a try for it. If the thing runs and we get to it, maybe we can drive back to headquarters. Any part of the storm. Come on. Keep low. Don't run in a straight line. Start reciting your poetry, fella. Get out that picture of the kid. It's in my hand. It's been there ever since we got here. I've had a feeling my time... Down, Sam! Not... Get down! Sam, boy! You are listening to Dana Andrews as Lieutenant Howard Jameson in Weather is a Weapon. On the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. Now, here is the second part of our story. In the field weather outpost in France, a few days before Christmas, 1944, Major Harned, in charge of local Air Force's weather service, is in conference with an Air Force colonel. The Battle of the Bulge has been in progress for ten days. Ten stormy, cloudy days. 
during which all Allied planes have been grounded. Well, Major? The answer is still the same, Colonel. Impossible. Major Hyde, I've got a thousand planes waiting for the word. And all I get is excuses. You know the 101st Airborne has been cut off, that they're lost, and our planes are sitting... Yes, Corporal? You asked me to sign contact Lieutenant Jameson and Crane, sir. There's still no answer from them. Thanks. Mm, they must have been caught to the 101st. Something else, Corporal? Yes, sir. Oh, two more good officers wasted. Hundreds of others, thousands of men, and we... Major, will you please stop shuffling those cards? These are analog maps. I know what they, they are. They contain a summary of daily weather maps for the past 50 years. Oh, that's ancient history. If you'd stop trying to deal in the past and get to work but on weather, the... like all history, repeats itself. Weather moves like the ocean in highs and lows, pressure areas, wind currents. Tomorrow's weather is in this stack of cards somewhere. I don't care where you get it as long as it's flying weather. If you don't run roosted, we'll sweep us back to the English Channel. September 22nd, 1905. Well, I'll leave you to your cards, Major. I hope you'll find the Joker before morning. September 22nd, 1906. September 22nd, 1907. Major, sir. Lieutenant Jameson is here. Here? He's here? Oh, Jameson reporting, sir. Well, glad to see you, boy. Oh, you all right, Jameson? The 101st was cut off, sir. We, Crane and I, managed to get out. We were running for a jeep. Crane was killed. Sorry. He's a swell guy. Thanks. Well, Major, you look as though you'd had a rough time yourself. I'm okay. Let's see your report, Jim. Yes, sir. Not very encouraging, I'm afraid. No. No, it is. Well, it agrees with ours, anyway. Corporal. Yes, sir. Send this report. Same old story, day after day. Same from all areas. Here it is. No ceiling. Poor visibility. Greatest cloud. False. That's all, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. Sending out such reports day after day while Germans keep killing our men. We've got to get our planes up. What do the analog charts do? Ah, the usual December story. Fog, snow, clouds. Grunstead knew it. That's why he struck now. I wish I was out there. We tried him. But I belong out there. We still have a few other men out. There must be something I can do. Get some rest. We need you, sir. I don't want any rest. Tell me what to do. What are you after, a miracle? Look at these reports. Every area, ceiling zero, 10-10 saturation, sleet, snow, all the way across the Atlantic, and still coming at it. Strong west wind blowing from America tonight, tomorrow, and the next day. Exactly the same as it's been for 10 days. Got the thing. Get some sleep, but then you can talk to up. I can't sleep. There's no use trying. Don't talk foolish. We can't beat this thing. We have to take weather as it comes. We can't Major. do it. I'm going back to the combat zone. I told you we got men there. Here. Here. Look at this map. But we don't have any at this point. Certainly not. That's miles inside the German line. Are you tired of living, Jim? No, sir, but the train wasn't either. And we can't let the Air Force down. How do you expect to get inside the German line? I can fly. You? You? In this weather? I can fly, believe me. And I can observe. I can look for a break that might be on its way. And if I find it, I'll recognize it because I'm a trained man. Now, Major, you've got to give me permission. Suicide in this weather? Look, Major. I've been flying in stupid bad as this in Greenland for two years. Isn't gambling just one life against thousands worthwhile? Isn't it, sir? There's an observation plane about two miles back, Wilson. Yeah. And a man here who'd like to go alone, I think. Came in with replacement. That's the doctor. Uh... Sergeant Gale. Gale? Sergeant Gale? Oh, boy. Oh, Major, everything's got to be all right. That guy is good luck to me. Thanks, sir. Thanks for everything. Come back alive, my boy. I don't want to have you on my conscience for the rest of my days. And I don't want the infantry on my conscience. I'll be back, sir. Visibility? Four. Well, check. Wind direction. 150 degrees. Check. And yeah, my life is sure monotonous, ain't it? Check. 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 Those are the fog monotonous. How's the gas situation? Low. Hey, Lieutenant, would I be impertinent if I suggested we turn back? You would. We're not turning back until we reach our destination. Our destination, huh? We're 50 miles over the German lines now, Lieutenant. What is our destination? A prison camp? Here's some more 
up, Lieutenant. What's the wind speed now? Below 30. Below 30? Don't fool me, Sergeant. Fool you? Oh, if it's below 30, the wind is dying down. We're supposed to be having a high west wind from North America. Yeah, I know. As the book said, weather progresses in a constant direction from North America to Europe and from the west to the east. Except when there's an east wind. If an east wind should spring up now, if that's why the west wind is dying... You expect to find an east wind at this time of the year in this weather? Look over there. Those clouds are shifting. Yeah. That might mean something. Hey, the wind is changing. But it's getting cloudier in saturation 1010. It makes a liar out of the rest of the stuff. Yeah. We're probably wrong. Yeah, we're hoping too hard. We're hoping so hard we think we see what we want to see. Maybe. But remember in Greenland? No, what? When we looked up and the moon was shining, making a monkey out of the rest of the chart. Yeah, I remember. And an east wind did that. Hmm? An east wind that brought different weather. Do you think... I'm not thinking, Sergeant. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. If we could just see those clouds break. If we could just see the moon. Bright-eyed fancy hovering o'er scatters from her pictured urn thoughts that breathe and words that burn. Uh, what you say? Oh, that poetry again, huh? Annoy you? No. Hey, wait a minute, Lieutenant. I just got an idea. I'm coming up front to take it. Come ahead. And darkness bearing down, gloomy, heavy-weighted like some Trojan steed with the trappings of war. Hey, uh, I ain't uh, superstitious, Lieutenant. Don't think that. But remember in Greenland when the moon started to come up and make a liar out of the chart? You talked to it. Remember? Like the moon was a beautiful day. I did? Yeah, it seemed to help, too. The moon got brighter. And I was wondering, well, uh, could you talk to it again, Lieutenant? I could try. It'd have the same effect on your reciting poetry, does. Keep you from blowing your top. I mean, well, well, you wouldn't be losing nothing. All right. I'll try, Sergeant. Yeah. I'll try. Come on, you bright-faced doll. There's a million of your boyfriends waiting for you down there. A million of them. The sight of you would mean more to them than any pen-up girl they've got in their collection. Come on, baby. Come on, for those guys down there. I love you, Lady Moon. I love your brother, the sun, your little cousins, the stars, and your boyfriend, too, the planet. And your elevation, your wind currents, and your lunar readings. I love them all, baby. I... <laughs> Sergeant, I guess I'm getting a little silly now, huh? Uh, maybe you ought to get tough with a lieutenant, huh? All right, then, I'll get tough. Listen, you, you suck-up cheesecake. <laughs> Come yeah. out from behind those cumulonimbuses. If you don't... That's lieutenant! Yeah? Maybe I'm seeing things, but... Nah, nah it's gone. What is it? Over there at 9 o'clock. I, I, I really thought I saw something. Holy smoke. Yeah, it's back again. I see it. A beautiful, bright path. Yeah. It looks as though somebody tore a hole in the black sky with a silver knife. Yeah, she's pretty all right. Oh, you did it, sweetheart. You glamorous hunk of heavenly girl. You did it. Yeah. Gail, radio the major. Shoot. Tell him it looks like a break in the stratus. Good visibility. Moving west toward our lines. Check. You think it'll reach our lines by morning? Let's keep our fingers crossed, Sergeant. Hold tight. We're going back. And there it was, sir, a narrow slit in the clouds. As soon as we got your report, we alerted the Air Force over the entire area. I hope it keeps coming this way. It will. Oh, I feel like a kid on his first airplane ride. Yes, Corporal. Here's the summaries of the whole area, sir. Well, here goes. Let's plot a map and see if conditions at other stations make your discovery a freak happening or something on which a forecast can be made. I've got my fingers crossed. Yeah, here's Jay. Jameson. Jameson. It worked. The second time in 50 years that December 23rd shows clear weather. Here, here, here. Read them for yourself. A Russian high blowing in from Siberia getting stronger every minute. I knew it. And thanks to you, we'll get the jump of the Germans. Von Rundstedt left himself wide open if he didn't know this was coming. There goes the first wave, sir. Yes, and look. 
Look out this window here. Holy cow. Bombers, fighters, ours. Boy, oh boy, we got them. Wide open, Jameson. Shall I send the report, sir? At once. This is the one I've been wanting to send. To Holland, Luxembourg, Belgium, France. December 23, 1944. Unlimited ceiling, good visibility, clear and cold. December 24, the same. Yes, sir. And December 25th, a Merry Christmas from the Air Force's Weather Service. Thanks to you, Dana Andrews, and to all members of tonight's DuPont Cavalcade cast. <laughs> now, here is Jane Whitman. War is giving Americans, in fact the world, a new appreciation of the value of scientific research. From the achievements of America's scientists have come the weapons with which our troops meet the challenge of enemy weapons. Radar, rockets, amphibious tanks, jet planes. Mines that can be set off at a distance by dialing their number on a telephone. These have come from the Office of Scientific Research and Development, from university laboratories, from scientists in the Army, Navy, and the other branches of the government, and in industry. And when the full story is told after the war, their achievement will be even more fabulous than the part of it we already know. The great work these men of science have accomplished is an illustration of the kind of research followed in peacetime throughout American industry, the chemical industry, the electrical industry, the glass industry, the steel industry, every field which makes use of science, which today means just about every field there is. It's an illustration of the kind of research DuPont knows so well and puts into practice to bring you better things for better living. One specific thing peacetime research at DuPont is working is to help lower the prices you pay. For instance, the price of neoprene. DuPont's chemical rubber has decreased 73% from the time it was introduced commercially in 1931. The insecticide that shows promise of being the best ever is still new, but the price has already been cut 62%. Weatherproof adhesives have been reduced 25%. The price of Freon, DuPont's safe refrigerant, which you probably have in your refrigerator, is about a third of what it used to be. And there are many other examples among chemicals less familiar to you. You'll probably never buy any urea, for instance, but manufacturers of plastics buy it. The United States used to import all its crystal urea. Now, DuPont makes it, and the price has been reduced more than 20%. Research, of course, cannot do the whole job. Engineers must build the plants to turn research development into chemical reality. Management, service departments, laboratories, foremen, the girl watching the trembling needle of a gauge are all partners in efficient production. Their working together results in greater efficiency, and that efficiency is reflected in a decrease in prices. You get the benefit of these lowered prices in DuPont's Better Things for Better Living Through Chemistry. Next week, the DuPont Cavalcade will bring you an amusing and moving story about doctors who care for our fighting men and the sea bees who build for them. It's the story of a small group of gallant men fighting against overwhelming odds to save hundreds of lives. Hampered by jungles, but aided by demons. Our star will be Robert Young, and our title, How to Build Paradise. Dana Andrews may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox Technicolor production, State Fair. The music for tonight's Japan Cavalcade was composed and conducted by Robert Armbruster. Our cavalcade play was written by Charles Rabiner, based on factual materials supplied by the United States Army Air Forces Weather Service. This is Frank Graham inviting you to listen next week to Robert Young in How to Build Paradise on the Cavalcade of America, brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This is the National Broadcasting Company.